Now, characteristics of the last days. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, Paul the Apostle says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, hot, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Paul the Apostle in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7, 8, 7 and 8 gives us a little more information about the nature of the coming deception. He says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The lawless one, the Antichrist, we believe, will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. We believe that the, that which restrains is the Holy Spirit working through the church. And when the church is taken out, the lawless one will then have full reign on planet Earth to uh, perpetrate his uh, coming deception. Verses 9 through 11. The coming of the lawless one is according to the power, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. So again, supernatural entities coming onto the earth with supernatural power performing signs and wonders in order to get people to follow after them and to worship them. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus Christ said, I am the way and the truth. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And we looked at this verse earlier in Romans chapter 1, verse 25. The effect of the lie is going to cause people to worship the creature, Mother Earth, uh, fallen angels, and Satan himself, the Antichrist himself, will be worshipped. Speaking of those people that are deceived and follow after the lie, it says of them who, ch who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Throughout the Bible, Satan is called the deceiver. He is, accomplishes his purposes primarily through the mechanism of deception. And the most skilled deceivers are people who can convince you that they're your friend. They're a good guy. You can trust me. Even though their agenda is evil, they try to feign benevolence. And yet, their agenda is terribly evil. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, speaking of Satan, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, what are some of the lies of Satan? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, Genesis chapter 3 in general, we read about the fall of mankind. Satan deceived Eve, and the first thing he got her to do was to doubt the word of God. He came to her, he said to Eve, Hath God said, has God really said that you should not eat of the tree? So he tried to get her to doubt the word of God. And that's the first thing that Satan will do to a Christian, is try to get you to doubt the word of God. And in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, it's, it's, um, this, the, uh, Satan, the serpent, said to the woman, you will surely not die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So after he gets her to doubt the word of God, he says, you're not going to die. He promises her eternal life, immortality. What a great promise. And he said that if you eat of this fruit, not only will you live forever, but your eyes will be opened and you can be a God. So she can be a god and live forever, according to Satan, and have incredible knowledge. The lies of Satan. Other lies. In this day and age, the most prominent lie is that there is no God, that we are the products of evolution, that a lightning bolt struck a puddle three billion years ago and chemicals came together by chance, and you're an accident. 
You evolved from the primordial goo through the zoo to you over three and a half billion years. And your ancestors were a bunch of knuckle dragon monkeys. And I like what Pastor Mike McIntosh says. He works in, he, uh, his church is in San Diego. He says that the monkeys in the San Diego Zoo get together regularly at night when there's no humans around. And they teach their children, we are not related to those people. <laughs> Have nothing to do with them. <laughs> so evolution and atheism, there is no God. We are the products of chance chemistry. And of course, out of that comes existentialism, the notion that there is no absolute truth and that morality and right and wrong is relative. Paul the Apostle in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, we saw this earlier, stated, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will, be tar some will depart from the faith, giving heed to to doctrines, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Again, the word giving heed in here in the, uh, in the Greek has the uh, notion of interfacing with, interacting with, like you and I are interacting right now. You're giving heed to me, we're interacting. And it also implies subtly the notion of worship. So people are gonna interact with, interface with deceiving spirits, fallen angels, and literally ultimately worship them as gods once they perform the lying signs and wonders. And these false deceivers will preach doctrines of demons. They will deny the biblical truths. They will deny the biblical worldview and get people to doubt, like Satan did, the word of God. Now, if the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth, if Jesus really is who he said he was, the very creator of the universe, manifested in flesh, then the coming deception will be pretty easy to figure out. It will present a counterfeit Jesus and a counterfeit gospel. It will be accompanied by supernatural phenomenon, and it will tempor temporarily deceive, as I mentioned, and as Jesus said, millions of nominal believers. Even the elect will be deceived for a while. Ultimately, I do not believe the elect will be deceived, though. And it will cause, of course, the people to worship the, create, the creature. Now, what would it take to deceive, if possible, even the very elect? We believe that it's not going to be just another belief system, another ism, another truth out there. Because every belief system that could exist, exists today. There is no God, there is a God. I'm God, you're God. The trees are God, Shirley MacLaine's God. The aliens are God. I mean, every belief system that could possibly exist already exists. So I, and, and yet the church is still here. God's elect are still here, and they're still believing. I believe that in order to deceive the elect, it's going to take powerful, palpable, visible, lying signs and wonders, miraculous events to convince people that these entities are our benevolent friends here to help us. It will seem real. The coming deception is going to be a real event. It's going to look visible, palpable. You're going to be able to touch it, taste it, smell it, hear it, see it. Your intellect won't help you. Your five senses won't help you. And only spiritual discernment up ultimately will help us detect the coming deception. 